Good morning. This is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, and I welcome everyone to our service this morning. Reverend Chris is out at Camp Harding this morning, and we will be hearing from him off and on. Um, I'm getting the feeling it might be more off this morning than on, but we'll deal with that. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's helping with the service this morning. So thank you, Chris, for everything you've done leading up to this start out at camp. Uh, Steve is on sound this morning, and oh my gosh, he has been invaluable to me this morning in getting set up, so thank you. And thank you, Pat Schmidt, for doing the readings today, and for Michael Siebert for the music selection and chanting. Hello, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> Sometimes it's a fun adventure just to see if you can do things. And we determined that we can, although it's a challenge from doing it out at Camp Harding. Good morning, everyone. I'm wondering, Stephen, would you mind uh, stopping your sh screen sharing for a moment? And uh, I think you can see me, but uh, here we are at beautiful Camp Harding. I want to say a huge thank you to Teresa for pinch hitting she is uh, a golden golden lady in my mind uh, for being willing to step up and uh, hold down the, the fort there at the church. And thank you so much for Stephen for uh, uh, working your magic as usual. Uh, yeah, we are out at Camp Harding here. Uh, yesterday was a big work project day. We had quite a few people. Today we have uh, just the Olsons were camping out at Cyprus last night. Everyone else went home. So you can probably see in my background there, we're social distancing. It's great to, great to be together in worship today. Um, this Obviously, this will be a very unusual thing for all of us, but it's fun to mix it up a little bit. And uh, I think it might be best if I, I did let Teresa lead uh, most of the, uh, the service order just because of the reliability of the internet connection. And uh, I will come on and uh, preach my sermon at the sermon time, if that's all right. So God bless you guys. And uh, uh, we will leave our video on. You guys can, uh, those who are logged in can, uh, can view us, but I think Stephen will spotlight uh, Teresa and share his screen. Let us, now turn to the beginning of our service and join together with some words of prayer. I think our processional is first, and I'll turn it over to Teresa. Okay, Stephen, can you please share the screen so I know what's coming up? <laughs> <laughs> I can see it and um, it's the thank you screen. So yeah, just advance. All right, our processional hymn is hymn number 423, How Great Thou Art. Then 
sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and see the blue and feel the gentle breeze, and then sings my soul, my soul. Sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think of God, his son, that's big. Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. And sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art.
Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We'll now sing hymn number 407. Many and great, O God, are your works. Our first reading will be read uh, by Pat Schmidt. A reading from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Accept one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything. Another, whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. The one who eats anything must not treat Sorry, that was a technical issue. Um, our reading is from Exodus chapter 14, verses 19 to 31. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with the wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. 
he jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters will flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And at daybreak, the sea went back into its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived, but the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, yes, our psalm is um, thanks to Michael. No, our psalm is not thanks to Michael. I'm going to read the psalm. Yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> As I said, technical glitches. So our psalm um, is Psalm number 114, and we will read it together this morning. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. All what ailed you, O sea, that you fled, O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flint stone into a flowing spring. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading um, is from Pat. Let's hear what Pat has to say. A reading from Exodus chapter 14, verses 19 to 31. A reading from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Accept one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything. Another, whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. The one who eats anything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever meets, meets me does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God, and whoever abstains does so to the Lord and give thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So who, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both death and living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? For why do you treat them with contempt? 
for we all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will continue our service with our gospel, and we will not be saying the Alleluia today. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Even the stones will cry out, Alleluia, if you try to silence them. <laughs> I'm going to take over the gospel reading since I'll be preaching and I, I uh, don't want Teresa to have to do everything today. So I invite you to stand, all those who can stand, and join with me, saying the parts that are bolded. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle the accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. And the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I have to blow up my video so our friends here can see us. There we go. Well, we have, uh, we've intentionally provided lots of opportunity for you guys to practice your forgiveness today. 
<laughs> with their ups and downs. But anyways, we didn't read this scripture today, but I want to use a passage from the prophet Job as a kind of prayer to begin my sermon today. Job tells us, Ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. As we come before God and worship today, let us cherish the natural world as a gift from God. Let our minds ask it questions and let our hearts be drawn heavenward. Let it be so, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to turn our uh, uh, laptop around and show you what it looks like here. It is gorgeous. Let's see if I can get around the altar here. And uh, see, so our other friends aren't on camera. I'm going to uh, preach from here. Well, it is so great to be here in worship with all of you this morning. And by here, I mean wherever you are, of course. That verse from Job might as well have said, Ask the World Wide Web, does it not know that God created it as well? This technology is a gift from God. It is a gift that we might gather together from literally anywhere that we are in the world. It is like I have a megaphone that is loud enough to reach around the world and I'm saying, it's good to be together here on this planet. And when people start colonizing other planets and the internet reaches there, our words will be broadened even further until we no longer hold place as part of our meaning. Maybe then we will finally say what we really mean. It is good to be together now. That moment in time is what is really important because in this moment of worship together, we are adding our voices with those who have gone before us. It's like we are building a heavenly cathedral. And every hymn we sing, every prayer we alter, we utter, is a stone placed in its walls. As time goes by, the chance to go back and change the past is gone. All we can do is focus on this present moment and cherish the good, good work we are doing together here today. You might be wondering what this introduction to my sermon has to do with the readings today. Don't worry, I'll get there. Our gospel reading today is about forgiveness. And forgiveness has everything to do about time, not so much to do about place. Someone could have wronged you on the other side of the world, and when you remember it, it joins you here in this place in this time. It happened in a completely different place, but it gets beamed from there to here in an instant. That present happened, or that wrong happens again and again in the present. This is the way that memory works. God gave us this ability to remember, and it is a gift. So somehow we must be able to make sense of our gospel reading today in that light. Our gospel reading today happens immediately after Jesus has told them how to deal with sin in the church. Jesus had told them, if a brother or sister sins against you, go to that person in private and talk about how their behavior hurt you. If they don't listen, Jesus said, come back with one or two others. And if they don't listen again, Jesus said, take it to the larger community of faith. If the person doesn't change their ways after being confronted by the community, then the community of faith is to, from that point on, treat them as a, quote, Gentile and a tax collector, end quote. Now to Jesus, Jesus' audience of the time, to treat someone as a Gentile and a tax collector meant to exclude the person, but we know that to Jesus it didn't mean the same thing. Matthew himself, the author of this gospel, had been a tax collector before his calling to be one of the disciples, and Jesus reached out time and again to Gentiles. Before his crucifixion, Jesus ate with them and socialized with them and welcomed them as his followers. 
And then after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to Peter and to Paul to specifically tell them that the Gentiles were not to be excluded from the church. So that command to treat the sinner like a Gentile and a tax collector was kind of like an Easter egg with its true meaning yet to be revealed. Our reading today is Peter's follow-up question to that instruction about dealing with sin in the church. Peter says this, or something along these lines, Jesus, what if that person who sins against me seems contrite when confronted, but then sins against me again and again and again? How many times should I forgive them then? Seven times? And Jesus replies, 77 times. Boom. Jesus clearly understands the reality of sin in the church, and he's already given provision for dealing with it. But his response here tempers his previous instruction about excluding sinners. He essentially tells his followers to err on the side of graciousness. And the reason he gives in the parable of the unmerciful servant, that's the name of the parable we read today, is that each one of us has racked up a far greater debt to God than any one person has become indebted to us. Now, just like the earlier instruction about dealing with sin in the church and that Easter egg about Gentiles and tax collectors, there's more to what Jesus says here than just what lays on the surface. In the parable, Jesus tells us, the Lord forgives the servant a huge debt, something to the tune of a billion dollars in today's money, but the, because the servant begs him to have mercy. The Lord is moved with compassion and forgives him. But then the servant goes out and shakes down someone else who owes him only a few dollars. That guy is unable to pay the few dollars, and so the servant throws him in jail. The Lord hears of this, and not surprisingly, he is angered. He calls the unmerciful servant in and says, You clearly don't appreciate the forgiveness you had been shown. Why did you throw this other one into jail for a much smaller debt? Now you too will be thrown into jail until you pay your debt back to me. Well, let's unpack this a little bit. Clearly in this parable, forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting the debt. Forgive and forget are two different things. Forgiveness has to do with the response of the debtee to the debtor. Forgiveness means choosing to forego the right to seek retribution. It means saying to oneself, today I am not going to chase that debtor. And the next day, saying again, today I am not going to choose to chase them. And then the next day, saying it again, today as well, I am not going to chase them down. That's why forgiveness is so difficult. It has to be a choice that we make every single day. But don't think that forgiveness means forgetting. Our memory is a gift from God, and in the case of forgiveness, remembering provides the opportunity for us to every day grow in graciousness. That memory is actually food for our souls to grow in the practice of forgiveness. Some people who have a little bit of knowledge of their Bibles, especially the NIV version, struggle to understand forgiveness because they try to understand this gospel reading today in light of what is a very bad translation of a passage from 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 5 of the NIV there says, Love keeps no record of wrongs. Now the Greek word used in the original text is logizatai, which itself comes from another word you might be more familiar with, logos. Logos is a very important word to understand because in other places in scripture, it tells us that Jesus himself is the Logos. Logos is used in Greek philosophy as the ordering principle of the universe. And when we read in John chapter 1 that Jesus is the word, and in him all things were created, it is this Greek word, Logos, which is translated word. Logo, or Jesus, is the divine ordering principle of the universe. So when Paul says that love does not logizetai wrongs, it has to do with ordering things in response to the wrong. It's not saying the wrong doesn't exist or that the wrong is forgotten. 
Paul is saying that love does not order itself according to the wrong. The NRSV of that passage is far superior. It says, love is not resentful. Love doesn't forget the wrong because we can't forget things at will. You don't need to feel guilty for remembering sin. Your memory is a gift from God and gives you the opportunity to grow spiritually today. To practice telling yourself today, I will seek no retribution. Today, I will not act resentful. Today, I will forgive. The Greek word for forgiveness in our gospel reading today is a faken. And the NIV that we use today, again, has a poor translation. It renders it, cancel the debt. The Lord cancels the debt of the servant. But literally, that word means to let it be. The Lord in the parable let go of seeking retribution. He let the situation be. But of course, he hadn't canceled the debt. The whole point of the parable is that the risk of the debt being called in still remains. For the time, though, God lets it be. God forgives us. Of course, with the benefit of after sight, we know that Christ's death and resurrection has a lot to do with that forgiveness. And we are meant to live in the awareness of our debt, though, as Christians, and also the awareness that God forgives us. God lets it be and does not seek retribution. We Christians live in that knowledge that God's grace is bigger than our debt, and that God chooses to act in a way not ordered by that debt. He chooses to forgive us. He chooses to let it be and not to seek retribution this day or any other. Let us live in this knowledge every day, this knowledge of God's forgiveness, so that we can let it be with our debtors each and every day as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Could you share the slide, please, Stephen? Let us stand and say together the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll now have our offering. Um, remember, you may make donations on our church website at stephensthemartyrsc.ca. There is a donate button near the bottom of that home page that you can use to make your donations or donations can be dropped off at the church or um, through our automatic withdrawal. Our offertory is 
the river. To the river I am going Bringing sins I cannot bear Come and cleanse me Come forgive me Lord I need to meet you there
I don't have the offertory prayer. And I can't hear Stephen. Okay. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. In this morning's prayer, um, I will be following litany number one. So if you're following at home in your prayer book, you can find litany number one on page 110. In peace, oh, let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for God's healing touch in our lives and in the broken relationships between Indigenous and newcomer people, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, the Most Reverend Dr. Linda Carol Nichols, our primate, the Most Reverend Greg Kerr Wilson, our Metropolitan, the Right Reverend Rob Hardwick, Bishop of Coppell. For the bishops, clergy and congregations in the Diocese of Mayinga and Lichfield, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for abundant harvests for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, for prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. For all in our hospitals and special care homes, and all who minister to them. For all who have asked for our prayers, whether for healing, help, or comfort, especially Donald, Amy, Sammy, Carrie, Michael, Verona, Agatha, Karen, Laird, Doris, and those known only to yourself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. We pray to you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, 
you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And let us lead not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Um, okay, I was just pausing for a second to see if Reverend Chris had any um, special announcements from Camp Harding, but I, yeah, I do have some announcements here. Oh, there <laughs> he is. Great. Yeah, I... Uh sent out a, a request on our TGIF news. Uh, if anybody has an old cell phone, we are needing one in order to prepare for the inevitable day when we try to do hybrid in-person and Zoom service at the same time. <laughs> so anything that if you're an iPhone user, an iPhone 6S, or later model or more recent model and I think that came out in 2016 or something like that so if you have an uh, an Android phone from 2016 or later that's kind of a uh, higher end one but you've upgraded uh, or as I said an iPhone from that generation or more recent and you are willing to let us use it uh, that would be greatly appreciated please call me and let me know and uh i will love to bless you for that uh so yeah that's my announcement and that's the only announcement for this week i believe turn it back to you Teresa. all right thank you um copies of our daily bread are available for september to november and um, they're available at the back of the church if you would like to have a copy of our daily bread just contact the office and we can arrange either pickup or delivery through the office. All right. Oh, happy anniversary, Larry and Sandra on September the 14th. And happy birthday, Leah, on the 16th. And happy birthday, Lorraine, also a September birthday. So congratulations and best wishes to all of you for those special occasions. I think that's all the announcements that I have as well. Our recessional hymn is Nothing But the Blood of Jesus.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Send us out in the power.